Hello, my name is Maestro Feliers. Welcome to the first tutorial of a whole series in regards to variations. In this series, we will learn what variations are, what techniques can be used, what material we can use to make variations with. We will analyze scores, listen to examples, and a method will be uh, given to you how to analyze a musical score and how to find the variations, variations from accompaniment or the variations from a theme, from a phrase, a subphrase, a motif, maybe variations from a musical cell, etc. When you have finished the whole series, I am 100% sure that when you apply all those techniques, your compositions will become masterpieces. If they are not yet masterpieces, of course, if they are masterpieces, then they will be become better. The goal in musical composition is to serve music and perfection is the norm. Then you step into the footsteps of the giants from the past. In this tutorial number one, I will teach you what variations are. I will give you some basic tools, also a list of study material for analysis. I will give you a brief explanation how to analyze. And then at the end of this short tutorial, I will give you an example of how to uh, vary a team that uh, I've made uh, 19 variations on a uh, subphrase from a hymn. So let's uh, dive directly into it and good luck. Variations can be categorized into two main groups. First, sectional variations, meaning a theme or a musical sentence, mostly between eight and uh, 32 bars is followed by variations. Secondly, continuous variations, meaning mater material of any sort is repeated in an altered form. The general groups of alteration are harmony, melody, accompaniment, counterpoint, rhythm, timbre, register, orchestration, or any combination of these. The basic techniques can be grouped as follows. Change of key, figurations, scales, Alberti bass, arpeggio, ornaments or embellishments, mutations, rhythm, binary, ternary, asymmetrical, or combination of the three. Some basic techniques are figurations. Here in uh, this example, we have, uh, first of all, two nodes. We have the C and the B. So the first variation is the anticipation, which is that the main note is approached by a step. Then secondly, when we have two same notes, C, C, there we can use a neighbor tone. Uh, neighbor tone, also known as auxiliary note, is a tone that passes stepwise above or below the main note. So you can uh, step up or step down and it goes back to the main note. Then we have of course the escaping tone or échappé. Um, and all these three techniques can also be used in a chord. But this is for another tutorial. Passing tones or passing notes are to connect two main notes. 
The abbreviatura is an accented neighbor tone from above or beneath the main tone. This also can be used specifically for the scything effect hmm, that we have uh, explained in how to create a scherzo. Then we have changing tones, changing tones also called double neighboring tones or neighbor groups. The changing tones are two successive non-harmonic tones. They may imply neighboring tones with a missing or implied note in the middle. Very beautiful and useful techniques are the suspensions, the retardations and the decorated suspensions. A suspension or synope. The first note is held temporarily before resolving downwards. You can also use this uh, resolving upwards. It depends what the main theme is. Eh? But when you do it upwards, then it is not a suspension anymore, but it is a retardation. It's only a technical term um, to imply the certain technique. And then you have the decorated suspensions, consist of uh, portamenti, before resolving. The portamento is a note sliding to another. A glissando is used to glide from one note to another when you have a huge gap. You can also, instead of a glissando, use the chromatic scale. Then we have the axia cantura, indicated with a grace note, followed by the main tone. The grace note, so the uh, axia cantura, is not stressed, it has not an accent, contrary to the abbociatura. So it is to make a very tiny figuration. There are also the ornamenti, like the trills, the mordent, the turn, and then any kind of combination. So different combinations are possible. Here we have the ornaments and how they are executed. Very interesting. I will give you here a list of composers and pieces for analysis. Of course, any kind of professional composer from the past is good to analyze but to become a great master yourself stepping into the footsteps of the great masters from the past you need to learn from the best there is and here I will give you a few composers and some works from their oeuvre from which you can learn variations. For the beginners among you, I would like to urge you not to touch the pieces from Beethoven or to dive into the pieces from Wagner or Liszt, but to start from uh, Jan Peterson Zweling, kind of a warm-up, and the selected pieces that I will give you here from Johann Pachelbel. Once you master those techniques, then you have built up a basis on which you can build and you can rise to the top. Otherwise, when you start with Beethoven and Bach, you will get lost. The first master I present to you is Jan Peterson Zweling. From his oeuvre, I would urge you to analyze. Ons is geboren een kinderkijn en mijn Junges Leben had ein End. The second master I would present to you for analysis is Johann Pachelbel. Choralvariationen, Christ, der ist mein Leben. Twelve uh, partiten, alle mensen moesten sterben. Acht partiten, uh, herzlich tut mich verlangen. Sieben partiten, was God tut, das ist uh, vorgetan. Uh, nine partiten, and then you have the six variations, four variations, and four variations. When you analyzed all of them, 
then you are well equipped to move forward. The third composer I would like you to study is Johann Sebastian Bach, because he is one of the sublime creative geniuses, a composer whose music is revered equally for its technical mastery, brilliant complexity and sheer exquisite beauty. Johann Sebastian Bach in the Baroque period has developed every possible technique in counterpoint, the fugue form and in um, um, four, uh, four voice harmony. Everything that is possible within tonality, you can find it in the works of Johann Sebastian Bach, who has created everything in a scientific way. From, from him, I would like you to analyze the Goldberg variations, the Pasascalia in C minor, and any kind of choral variationen. The next composer you need to study is Ludwig van Beethoven. Not only was Ludwig van Beethoven an innovator, but he pushed the music into a totally different era. Not only, like most uh, musicologists would say, he introduced the Romantic period. No, no, no. He pushed forward further than the Romantic period into the second school of Vienna. Beethoven, due to hard work, is the master, the genius, the genius of geniuses who can make loads of variations with only one team. His works are not only exquisite, but they consist of thousands of pearls. Where you find 500 pearls in the works of Bach, you find um, 10,000 pearls in the works of Beethoven. From him, I would like you to analyze the piano sonatas. Mozart has written very beautiful piano sonatas, but to explain it very simple, once you have heard one piano sonata from Mozart, you have heard all of them. But Beethoven, each piano sonata is different. Each movement from each piano sonata is different. The same as his variations for pianoforte. Each variation is different. So that's what I, what I meant by if you find thousand pearls in the works of Bach, you will find 10,000 in the works of Beethoven. Therefore, Beethoven is the composer that if you as a professional composer would like to write masterpieces, the best of the best, you cannot do this without having analyzed Ludwig van Beethoven. Karel Czerny, student from Beethoven, and one of the main teachers from Franz Liszt is very important in regards to his étude. His études are, uh, they have many, many, many different forms what he can do with a chord. So I would like to urge you to analyze the art of velocity opus 299 and um, Kunst der Fingerfertigkeit opus 699. From Franz Liszt, although any kind of work from him you can use, but for me, in my opinion, the most fruitful for variations or techniques, what you can do with motifs and with musical cells, are his Etuden für Klavier zu zwei Händen, Etude d'exécution transcendante. I add Johannes Brahms to the list because the three Bs, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, are the primacy in classical music. And as Hans von Bülow mentioned, Bach is God the father in music, Beethoven is God the son in music, and Brahms is the Holy Spirit in music. From Brahms, 
I would like you to study the variations on a team by Haydn, Opus 24, and the variations on a team by Baganini, Opus 35. The last composer in the list, the last but not the least, is Frédéric Chopin, from which I would like to ask you to analyze the revolutionary étude, specifically the team, and his nocturnus, his nocturnus, um, what he does with a melody, with a phrase, with a subphrase, and also the uh, variations uh, with the uh, accompaniment and the uh, harmonic structure. So, this is all in regards to the selected works. Now I will give you a general explanation how we analyze a musical piece. Beethoven, Mozart, Bach have analyzed day and night musical pieces from the great masters from the past. Now, what do you need? First of all, you need to have the music score. Without a score, you cannot analyze. Secondly, you need to have a lot of music papers and pencils. Thirdly, you write down what you will look for. If you look for variations on the accompaniment, then you, have not, you do not have to look for a melody, you look for the accompaniment. If you would like to analyze variations on the second subphrase of a phrase, then first of all you have to look for the phrase, and then within the phrase you have to divide it into the first subphrase and the second subphrase. You write down on your music paper the phrase or subphrase or the accompaniment or the material you would like to see variations from. Then search for that material in the score and you just copy it by hand on your music paper. You number them accordingly. Variation 1, variation 2, variation 3, variation 4. Once you have written down all the variations, then you can put the score aside and you take your notes and you analyze. You see what he has done with the main material in, for example, variation 5. What, uh, what has he done? How did, did he make a variation from the team? Or um, the variation 2, or variation 6, or variation 20. Try to write down what the composer has done. Did he use an inversion? Did he use figurations? Did he use ornamenti? Um, of what kind of technique did he use? Very important is if your inner ear is not developed, that you listen to the variations on YouTube or on CD or on your smartphone, or that you play it on the piano or on any kind of instrument that you can uh, master. Note that the more time you invest in analysis, in the way the old masters did, by using pencil and paper, the better you will be equipped and the higher the level of your compositions will be. To finish this tutorial, I will give you an example of variation possibilities on a subphrase. So here we have a subphrase coming from a hymn, and I have created 19 kinds of simple variations on it. The first variation 
as you can see in the first bar I used triplets the second variation I used uh, the same rhythm for each note except for the last note the third variation you can see that I used um, the F in octaves in triplets the E the same etc the fourth variation I used octaves two octaves going up in variation 5 7 8 you can see that I started to use already a harmony thinking harmonical uh, in the key of D minor the sixth variation it's um, a simple variation mm. and then in the ninth I used uh, syncopes syncopic rhythms variation 10 you can see that the notes the main notes are split up it starts with FF in an octave then the E as F goes to E down the F upwards goes up to the G so then from an octave you goes to a rich interval and it moves up like this variation 11 and variation 12 is then again thinking harmonically and with um, arpeggios variation 16 I used scales upward going scales you can also use scales going downwards or a combination up down up down or up up down down in variation 17 instead of using a triad I used only two notes of the chord and then you see that uh, the F D is a third and in the 18th variation I switched them the third becomes a sixth so this is also a very interesting technique so that you have already two variations on a team there are thousands of other possibilities which we will not cover in this tutorial as we just don't have enough time now some potentials that you can use and that we will uh, dive into it in the next tutorials uh, can be rhythmical changes reversing or mirroring the phrase mutations dissecting the phrase into motifs and using different variation techniques on them the same can be done with musical cells which are parts of motifs so we have arrived at the end of tutorial one introduction to variations thank you very much for having watched the tutorial if you would like to have lessons in composition you can always send me an email to feliersluk at gmail.com I hope to see you again at the next tutorials. Good luck and keep up the good work.